You can begin, Clarissa. Good evening. My name is Clarissa Pickens and I'll be your moderator for this evening's class. Welcome to another lecture given by members of the Southfield, Michigan class. This is a school and not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denomination, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Southfield, Michigan class was established in 1997. At this time, I would like to introduce to you the Dean, Dr. Marvin Lewis, and the president, Dr. Edward Yule. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and are not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any letters or characters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of the Heavenly Father and his Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. In this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua, the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given into salvation and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also at this school, we teach by a divine pattern of the universe, 
It is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place, and court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The constitutional objectives and or aims of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, save in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. And at this time, we'll have a prayer by Dr. Lauren Lewis. Our scripture lesson this evening will be Acts, the second chapter, and that will be read by Dr. Brandon Craig. I'd like to say good evening to the class. May we all bow our hearts and minds in the moment of prayer. Thanking Yahshua for another opportunity to breathe the breath of life so we can learn more of him as he really is and actually exists. Asking Yahshua to still our minds, allow us to hear the words that he will have spoken this evening through the vessels that are called on. Please allow the words to be spoken in truth and in righteousness and for it to be pleasing in your eyesight. All these things that we ask in our brother and savior, who is saving us daily, his name, Yahshua the Messiah, let us all say, hallelujah. 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 I'd like to say good evening to the class, and I'll be reading Acts, the second chapter, and I'll be reading that out of the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments and critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts revised by the late E.B. Trainer and reprinted by Yahshua Promotions. That's Acts, the second chapter. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, while they were all with one accord in one place, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and rested upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. 
And they all were amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and in Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of Elohim. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine and are drunken. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is of that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith Yahweh, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens will I pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood, before that great and terrible day of Yahweh come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of Yahweh shall be saved." Ye men, sons of Israel, hear these words. Yahshua of Nazareth, a man approved of Yahweh among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which Yahweh did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of Yahweh, ye have taken, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom Yahweh hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. For David speaketh concerning him, I have set Yahweh always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in Sheol, neither wilt thou suffer thine Holy One to see corruption. Thou hast made known me, to me the ways of life, thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that Yahweh had sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Messiah to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of the Messiah, that his soul was not left in Sheol, neither did his flesh see corruption. This Yahshua hath Yahweh raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of Yahweh exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he hath shed forth this, which ye know, now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, Yahweh said unto my Eloah, Sit thou on my right right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that Yahweh hath made that same Yahshua, whom ye have crucified, both the King and Messiah. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be immersed, every one of you, in the name of Yahshua the Messiah for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as Yahweh our Elohim shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this perverse generation. Then they that gladly received his word were immersed, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers. 
and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together, and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had need. And they, pardon, and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their food with gladness and singleness of heart, praising Yahweh, and having favor with all the people. And Yahweh added to the congregation daily such as were being saved. That was Acts, the second chapter. Hallelujah. And I'd like to say good evening to the class once again. Our scripture readers this evening will be Drs. Brandon Craig and Dr. Felicia Hamilton. And I'm happy to call on our first speaker from the Southfield, Michigan class, Dr. Alexis Hamilton. Dr. Hamilton? Good evening, class. Um, grateful to be here today um, to have anything to say about Yahshua the Messiah. Um, and uh, that is kind of a common thing to say, but it is very true in every part. <laughs> to have anything to say, to even just know his name is um, a blessing and I thank Yahshua every single day for me to even know that um, and not only think that or uh, making this concept in my head about it. You know, he's proven it to me countless times of what his name is and uh, what the truth is. And I'm always grateful for that every single day. Um, I really enjoyed the uh, scripture reading it. Uh, um, if we could go there, um, starting at four, two and four. Acts two and four. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Okay, so um, I should have uh, went up to two, but, you know, suddenly there was a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And that reminds me of um, our lungs and, you know, that uh, if we could get over there when he uh, uh, created Adam and he breathed uh into him i can't remember where that is i think it's in genesis mm -hmm. yep okay that's genesis 2 and 7 and yahweh elohim formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and mm -hmm. man became a living soul right so without yahweh <laughs> we're uh, we're not animated. He is what animates our body. He's basically like, I always say like the battery of the body. He's uh, animated us and breathed into us the breath of life. And that's what that reminded me of in Acts, hearing that. And then uh, once they were filled with that Holy Spirit, uh, all of a sudden they could all like understand each other. At least that's what I'm getting from what this uh scripture was saying but um it, it just reminds me of once you're translated into this gospel um and you're with the brethren you just all just kind of understand you you understand Yahweh and he you are all within the house of Yahweh and uh you know coming into this gospel I mean I was born into it and you know growing up you know I've you know, being around other people of different religions in school all day, every day. 
you know, you always heard different things. And of course you question, and that's what he wants us to do is to question. And, you know, he takes you through things like that so that he can show you proof of uh, what the truth is. Right. Um, so coming into the gospel, you, you kind of change, um, there's, there's a scripture, um, that talks about, you know, uh, bringing upon the new man. So, you know, you, you get rid of those concepts and opinions and, um, following like a sheep upon slaughter, you know, just following along, whatever, uh, just because you see, you know, people you love doing it or, um, wanting to be, you know, with the crowd or be accepted and things like that. But we got to understand that um, we're not supposed to be a part of all of that. It's said in the scriptures as well. You know, we're not with everyone. And he's shown that countless times. And, you know, sometimes, you know, it, 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 you get conflicted with that in real life sometimes. But you got to understand that Yahshua is there with you every step of the way. And you're not. Um, it reminds me of uh, when Yahshua did come in, uh, if we could get that scripture when he came into, I think it was Jerusalem on uh, the donkey. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what scripture that is, though. You're riding in on, a, on, a, on the ass? Yeah. Okay. That is... That's Mark 11 and 1 through 11, uh, Felicia. Right. Thank you. That's Mark 11 and 1. And when they came nigh to Jerusalem and to Bethlehem and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent forth two of his disciples and saith unto them, Go your way into the village over against you. And as soon as ye be entered into it, ye shall find a colt tied whereon never man sat, loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, why do ye this? Say ye that the master have need of him and straightway he will send him hither. And they went their way and found the colt tied by the door without in a place where two way, and excuse me, in a place where two ways meet and they loose him. And certain of them that stood there said unto them, What do ye loosening the cult? What do ye loosening the cult? And they said unto them, Even as Joshua had commanded, and they let them go. And they brought the cult to Joshua and cast their garments on him, and he sat upon it. And many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches off the trees and strawed them in the way. And they that went before and they that followed cried, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of Yahweh. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of Yahweh. Hosanna is the highest. And Yahshua entered into Jerusalem and into the temple when he had looked round about upon all the things. And now even tide was come, he went out into Bethany with the twelve. Okay. So um, I guess I was uh, trying to get the point that uh, Yahshua wasn't um, like uh, shown in glitz and glamour. You know, he was, uh, he looked like a regular guy. And um, you see the world get so heaped up into all of that they they look toward you know the pope and his glory and you know his gowns and you know his big uh vatican that he lives in and things like that but uh we got to understand that the house is within us yashua is in us that's who we have to worship within um in spirit and in truth um so uh, let me see here. There was another part of the scripture lesson that I really enjoyed. Um, if we could get um, 
So if we can start at 41 to the end. Acts 2 and 41. Then they that gladly received his word were immersed. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together, and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their food with gladness and singleness of heart, praising Yahweh, and having favor with all the people. And Yahweh added to the congregation daily such as were being saved. Mm -hmm. So, um... those people that were baptized in the name of Yahshua the Messiah um, continued daily with in one accord in the temple. So uh, we are within that temple of Yahshua the Messiah. We all, there's just like you have different body parts. Everybody is, you know, part of that body. You know, there may be different uh, functions just like uh, in the body there's different systems and different functions of all your organs and um, things like that so uh, you know knowing uh, Yahshua the Messiah in spirit and truth um, it brings that happiness because it says that they ate their food with gladness and simplicity simplicity of heart you know, we're eating this bread, um, this knowledge of, of Yahweh, and um, it, it really actually makes you happier <laughs> in this crazy world that's going on. You see nothing but sadness and um, depression and uh, uh, I forgot the scripture that uh, kind of went through all of the crazy things that go on in the world, you know, war and things of that nature. Um, but uh, that's exactly what's going on now. And, you know, having this gospel gives you that, uh, that uh, the garments or what was that? The, like the helmet of salvation and um, mm -hmm. uh, what was that scripture? Does anyone know where that one? That? Yeah. You want that one? Okay, that's Isaiah. Uh, or no. I'm sorry, that's Ephesians 6 and that's 17, but I'll back up. Uh, let me get Ephesians. Okay, so it's, I'll start at 10. Mm -hmm. Finally, my, I'm sorry, Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in Yahweh and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of Yahweh that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of Yahweh, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was beautiful. So I think about uh, that often, um, just you know just starting a day you know you talk to Yahshua you thank you Yahshua for waking me up you know help me get through this day it's like having that little conversation with him it's kind of like putting on that armor for today um but uh you know I'm just grateful to um to see these mysteries and he's revealing this stuff to us and sometimes when you do hear something, you may not understand it right away, but sometimes, you know, maybe a few weeks 
later you get that revelation and and even that whole process is part of uh his pattern as well so um i just thank yashua for even having me be able to realize that because you know knowing this gospel it makes you see things differently it makes you uh react differently um it makes you feel different so um very grateful to be here um I'm, my prayer is to continue to try and learn of him and uh the thing all of this stuff that he's provided us um it's easy to you know sometimes set that aside because that's what this earth is doing it is it, it, it's it, it's it's job to distract you and um get you you know off trail or off guard so I just continue to pray that, you know, me and, you know, all of the brethren uh, um, continue to uh, stay within Yahshua. And, um, you know, um, my hope is to just be able to speak some of this to someone else and hope that they can, you know, take it upon themselves to speak with Yahshua one day, you know, in spirit and truth and to learn what I know you know, and to know it for a fact, instead of just, you know, being skeptical about things or, you know, just slightly following along because they think it's right. Um, so thank you for um, hopefully listening and uh, hopefully someone got something out of that. So uh, I'll yield the floor. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And for our next speaker, uh, we're happy to call from the Southfield, Michigan class. Dr. Jarenis Bives. Jarenis Bivens, but that's okay. Hi. No, don't apologize. Hi. No. I thought that might be my name you were trying to say. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much for um, calling me. I'm so happy to be here, truly. And like, um, I really enjoyed the first speaker. Oh my goodness, because I was having that same thought in my head when I first started class. I used to hear people say that, you know, it's an awesome thing to be able to have something to say about Yahweh Elohim. And, you know, like children do, you know, they repeat what they hear. So at first I would just, you know, repeat what I heard. But then I, I started to understand that I really am grateful to have an understanding of, of this knowledge that he's given me. To understand that just knowing it is a gift from him. He gave me <laughs> with the ability to understand if I'm saying that right. I just, I'm just, really appreciative of this truth, mm -hmm. of what the truth is. Mm -hmm. And he didn't just give us a truth. He gave us, he answered the why for everything because he is the why, right? Yahweh. That's right. <laughs> That's right. But uh, it's just beautiful. You know, just the little things like that where he just confirms my faith daily i just appreciate it so much and like i was saying you know it is awesome to have anything to say about yahweh elohim because he's, he's giving it to us um the other day um like um uh, x24 she was saying about speaking in tongues the other day i was talking to my sister and she was like um uh, well i speak in tongues and that's a confirmation that you know the creator is with me and I asked her, did she understand what she was saying when she spoke in tongues? And she said, no, it's not for her to understand it. It's for the creator to understand it. And um, it's just having being in class and having the, the revelation and, and the vision explained to me and having some understanding of it. I know now that the reason the people at Pentecost were speaking in tongues was because was for the other people there to 
understand, to get some knowledge of Yahweh Elohim and what he was doing, of Yahshua and what he was doing. So I was, you know, just trying to tell her that, you know, I think it's a scripture. I don't know where it is, but it's something about if there's nobody here to nobody there to interpret or to hear it. But, you know, what good is it to speak in tongues if there's nobody there to hear or to receive what you're giving? Mm -hmm. So I was just grateful to be able to have that knowledge in me because I didn't have to go and look for it anyway, anywhere. It's just in me because he's giving it to me. He's giving me that understanding. And I know that everybody don't have it. Um, and everybody is not going to get it. And I'm grateful and that he's allowed me to have some understanding and to be able to speak about him in some kind of way that somebody can understand. Mm -hmm. uh, and <laughs> the most important person is me understanding because the more I talk to somebody, I'm saying stuff that I don't even know that I knew I know. I mean, right. I, I know I knew, uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I don't, I didn't know I knew that about the tongues until she said something to me and it just came out because he's put it in me so it could come out to, you know, to somebody else so it can be, you know, life saving to, for someone else. I'm just, just so grateful, just so grateful um, to have some kind of understanding, you know, the, the comfort that it brings and the peace that it brings in all aspects of my life. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Bivis, did you want that scripture about hearing without a preacher? Oh, if you have it, I'd love it. Thank mm -hmm. you. Sure. That's Romans 10, and I'll start at 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of Yahshua the Messiah shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Thank you. Yes. Um, I just, I'm just grateful to have some kind of understanding of the vision and revelation that was given to Dr. Henry Kenley Clifford. And um, I know that it was sent by Yahweh Elohim himself because everything that I've learned is it just goes into accordance with everything that I've learned like in a in everyday life like um I have a new grandbaby she's three months and um well this is my fourth one but having my grandkids they they like really helped me to understand like me and where I am in learning um, like when you teach your grand, when, when I teach my grandbabies, the ABCs, it's a repetition just over and over, A, B, C, D, one, two, three, you know, and it's just, you know, you just repeat it over and over. And that's how the vision is. You just have to keep going over it and over it. And the more you go over it, the more it's opened up to you. Um, uh, when I first start, um, studying or start learning uh, I didn't like to ask questions in class because I didn't want to interrupt everything was so beautiful and I was just learning so much so when I would drive to class I would um just ask a question in my head to him and he would answer me in class without me having to say anything to anybody that's he right. would just answer my question for me without it just it just confirmed it just confirmed my understanding my belief right <sighs> um oh uh, i'm sorry <laughs> trying not to be uh nervous but um 
and the first speaker, she was saying how you don't want to follow the crowd, you know, how the crowd say amen um, to agree. And at first I didn't understand what was wrong with that, but I don't want to just give praise to just any man. I mean, if that's the case, then you could say praise me. If that's right. Right. So, no, I don't accept that anymore. It's hallelujah because all praises go to Yahweh Elohim. Um, Because he is the only one that's worthy. And it makes a a, a difference. Um, And to me, that's like um, that scripture that says he wants you to be, he preferred for you to be hot or cold. And if you're warm, he'll want to spew you out his mouth or something like that. I don't know where that scripture is, but you have to decide. You can't be um, on the fence about it. You can't say, um, amen, hallelujah, you know, because it's like you warm. You throwing the cold in with the hot, making it warm. You got to be either on one side or the other. And if you're not on Yahweh's side, you are on the adversary side. And Do you want that scripture, Dr. Oh, yes. Did you have it? I'd love it. Thank you. Yeah, that's Revelation 3 and 16. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Yes, it's important. And it makes me think about when we had that election. You know, it was everybody was, are you going to vote? You got to vote. You got to vote. You have to choose. Everything in this life shows you that you have to make a decision. You have to, you know, you have to decide and and right now it's just so important to me it's just feeling so important to me right now to decide to choose him and to praise him in every breath that you take because you the truth of it is he is the only hope um for us you know in this world that's right, that's right. You know, like she, like um, Dr. Hamilton said, this world's job is to distract you with things that don't matter. You know, you want to say like, like now I'm trying to keep, you know, help my daughter with her baby. And I sort of put my job to the side, you know, took an FMLA so I could, you know, you know, be there for my child. And, um. It's like me deciding who is my provider. Who am I dependent on for my daily sustaining? And I'm only relying on Yahweh Elohim for it all and through it all. That's right. And I think that what he's asking us to do in return is not much. All he wants you to do is to spread this good news of the gospel. And it's it's not asking that much. It's, mm-hmm. And it's just, I want to say it's so easy to understand, but that's because he's opened it up to me because when I try to explain it to other people, they don't understand it. That's and I'm and it just makes me even more grateful because it wasn't hard for me to understand and it, and I'm able to you know share it with other people you know if it's nothing but the importance of his name you know um his name couldn't be Jesus <laughs> it just couldn't have been um there's no J in the Hebrew language to this day. No letter in their alphabet that makes that sound. And it's just so many proofs in the world um, that I have found. You know, like they say, you spell his name in your face. And that's like one of my favorite things that, to find out. Because, you know, it was a time in my life when I was so down and depressed that I couldn't even look in the mirror. The adversary had me so distracted and so disillusioned that I didn't even want to look at my own face to see my creator's name, my savior, my rescue right there in the mirror. Oh, just so grateful. 
just so grateful to know that my creator is real. And he does have a name. And it doesn't change. Exodus 3 shows us that his name is Yahweh Elohim and it's to generations to come. If you could get that scripture for me. Is it Exodus 3? Um, mm -hmm. That's what Moses at the mount. Okay, so that's Exodus 3 and I'll start at 13. And Moses said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The Elohim of your fathers have sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And Elohim said unto Moses, I will be, have sent me. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I will be, have sent me unto you. And Yahweh, I'm sorry, and Elohim said moreover unto Moses, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Yahweh, the Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob have sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. And you read that scripture to somebody or ask somebody to read that scripture and they still can't see. And they say that this is his modern name with this J. Right. But who was the person in that a scripture too? Who changed the lie into the truth into a lie? That's right. Mm -hmm. Who did that? It's that's only right. one. That's the that's adversary right. who is the father of the lie. That's right. Are you going to get that scripture for me? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's uh, Romans um, 1 and 25, Dr. Craig. Sorry, I'm looking for it too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Romans 1 and what did you say? 25. You may want to pick up the change of thought. Yeah. Who changed the truth of Yahweh into a lie? and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Thank you. Uh, I'm just grateful for the confirmations that he's given me and the daily confirmations that he gives me. I'm grateful for the peace of mind, body and spirit, which I didn't even know you could have but I'm grateful because I'm experiencing it and I know that it's only through him. Um, I, that's about all I, I have to say. It's just, I'm grateful that he didn't just give us a vision. He gave us a, a revelation. He, you know, he went the step further to, you know, explain why to us. That's a, that's an awesome, awesome element. You know, he didn't have to tell us why, how many times I done told my kid, because I said so. That's what it is. It is. He could have did that, and he could have had us walking around here like robots if he wanted to, but no, he made us the way we are, because this is his story. This is his plan. It's his purpose. And it's for our soul salvation. That's right. And I'm just, I'm just so grateful because I know that I didn't know none of this. I couldn't have known none of this. I had, I had studied with Jehovah's Witnesses for years, and I didn't have a, a, a inch of the, the information, the understanding of my Creator, as I have now. I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful because He took my fear away. Mm. So great. That's right. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to be out here wandering mm -hmm. in the dark. I got some, some light and some help. I can help somebody too. And the things that I can tell them is life saving soul saving and I'm grateful that you chose me
And I will continue to learn as much as I can about him. And I will continue to spread it as long as you give me this breath. With those words, I say hallelujah. 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 Thank you. And for our next speaker, we have from the Southville, Michigan class, Dr. April Lewis. Good evening, class. Good evening. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Just give me one second, please. Sorry about that. That's okay. One second, please. Good evening, class. Um, bedtime over here for the little one. <laughs> um, it's a pleasure um, to be able to um, attend class this evening. Um, I really enjoyed the previous speakers. I mean, it's just, whew. The last speaker, um, I kept saying, her voice sounds so familiar, sounds so familiar. She kept talking. I said, oh my goodness, it's Sister Bitter. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> to see her growth yes. over the years, it, it's amazing. Because it shows that um, Joshua is with us. And um, he's revealing himself to us every single day. And I am also so grateful to know something about him. It's an amazing thing and it gets emotional. And it's, I'm, I'm, so, I'm always happy that I'm crying. I'm not sad. It's, it's, I'm so happy to know that Yahshua is in me and my loved ones and the brethren. It's, it's like a a breath of fresh air. And we need that. We need it. It's rough out there. So I'm thanking him as always for everything. <laughs> it's not one particular thing. It's everything that he has done for me. I do want to say that this is a school and it's not a church. And we gather to learn something about our creator as he really is and actually exists. The first speaker was talking about putting that, that armor, that whole armor of Elohim in one. We have to be mindful to ask him to protect us. And he has done that and he will continue to do so. The second speaker, and I just want to just say this before I get into whatever he's going to lead me into. The second speaker talked about her sister speaking in tongues and she asked her sister, do you understand what you're saying? She said, no, well, that makes no sense. It makes no sense. See, now I have come to understand that the true speaking in tongues is telling people about this gospel. Yahweh Elohim Initially, they, not even initially, but they say, who, you know, don't make any sense to these people. We look weird to these people talking about Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua. And that's, that's so because the whole world is duped into Jesus, just like we was. But what Yahshua did, he snatched, he just didn't take me out. He completely snatched me out of the world and told me to sit down. And just listen, just listen. The first thing that I learned was his name. See, he gives us, let's get Romans 1, 9, 1 and 19. He gives us this, this physical 
things in this world. He gives us that, people, so we can understand something spiritually so, which is the reality. That's the reality of the thing. We, we don't know nothing but the physical creation, the physical, physical beings, and we know how he made us. He did that so we can understand something spiritually, so we can understand something about him. That's right. I mean, that's just, that, that makes sense to me. I need something that's going to make sense. And this makes sense because it's the truth. My Dr. Kenley, who was the founder of this school, he said that he had a vision from Yahweh Elohim and make me prove it to you. I've never heard nothing like that before. Before this, never. And prove it until you're satisfied. That's amazing. That's amazing. So this physical earth plane, let's read Romans 1 and 19, please. Romans 1 and 19. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. See, now we can know something about Yahweh, who was the creator of heaven and earth. We can know that he is threefold, one Yahweh, one, you know, one Yahweh, the pure spirit of Yahweh, two manifestations. We can know that he is not a trinity. We know that. We know that he has made heaven and earth. We know we can look outside and we can see. Wow. We can give all the glory to Yahweh. Look at that tree out there. <laughs> you know, it, we can know something about Yahweh. I never, never even thought that I could know something about the creator. Never even thought that. I'm sorry, Brandon. Continue that, please. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. Mm -hmm. For Yahweh hath showed it unto them. Mm -hmm. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power, and supernal nature so that they are without excuse. See, that is a great parent. You don't just, you know, have your children out there just all bad, just whatever. You spanking them, ain't telling them why. Popping them, ain't telling them why. You doing this, ain't telling them why that was so. See, a good parent, you do something, a parent is going to tell you, don't do that. Well, well, why? And I'm going to explain why not to do that or to do or, or to do it. A good parent explains, look, baby. That's what Joshua has done. You know, we don't have an excuse to not know nothing anymore. There's no excuse for that. He has taught us something and he expects us to, do, to just do what he says. It's so easy, it's so easy to just do the right thing. My daughter is 12. I say, it's so, we're teaching her now. Look, just do what we say. Your life is gonna be so much easier. <laughs> just follow the rules. Just follow the rules. Yashua said, just learn of me. Let's get Matthew, um, take my yoke. I'm sorry, I, I forgot what that is. Matthew 10, 11. See, he said, learn of me. That's all you got to do. See, now we was in the world. What was we doing? Paying tithe, giving the little money we did have to the pastor. They living beautifully and I'm living in a shack. It makes no sense. That's why if you're not praising Yahshua, that, like the previous speaker said, you are praising the adversary. Because it ain't, it ain't nothing. Yahshua is the only one. But he has to show you that. He has shown me that. I always get John 15, 16. My mom loves that scripture. <laughs> See, he didn't choose, we didn't choose him, he chose us. That's like having children. The kid, I feel bad for some kids. You know, they, they didn't ask to be here. Same thing. They, these kids didn't ask to be here. 
You made a decision to have a child. Joshua has he made a decision to make a creation and to choose his creatures and his children. See, he chose us. We didn't choose him. He has showed us something about himself. Don't your parents show you themselves? I know everybody on here, parents are, are, are deceased or still alive. You know something for sure about your parents about your mother and your father. It's the same, it's Romans 119 and 20. You can ask my child, tell me something about your mother and she'll tell you, and it's gonna be the truth, I hope. <laughs> same thing. So Yahshua made this creation. He chose his creatures from the beginning of the creation. He, he knew who was gonna accept this gospel or not. That's why all we have to do is learn of him. We see a, a pamphlet laying around somewhere. Pick it up, read it. We, like Dr. Kenley said in one of his, his transcripts, we wrote a book, you won't even read it. We have to ask Joshua to help us with everything. Joshua, take the, the cares of the world from my mind so I can concentrate on you. We ask for everything else. Ask him to just, just calm you. Calm you down. Previous speaker, I'm just, it's just, she said, he has taken away my fears. <laughs> he was the only one that could do that. Whatever you have in the problem with, you ask him to help you. Take it away. Yes. Please take yes. it away. He will do it. I know for sure. I know that he would do it for sure. I don't know if I have it. Yes, read uh, Matthew, please. Take mm -hmm. my yoke. Mm -hmm. That's Matthew 11, and I'll start at 28. Okay. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and mm -hmm. I will give you rest. Mm -hmm. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for mm -hmm. I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm. That's, that's amazing. Yes, it he is. has given us rest. Yeah. I'm not worried mm. about nothing. <laughs> about nothing. Because honestly, you worrying is not going to change nothing. See, what Yahshua say is going to happen, is going to happen. You can't stop that from happening. Nobody can hinder or impede the purpose of Yahweh. He's Yahweh. He is eternal. He is the all in all. You can't stop it. You know, I don't even know. I, whew, I'm so happy and I'm so thankful, but it's, it's it's, a lot has been on my mind, but let's get, um, I've just been really just thinking about the New Testament and um, I was reading a little bit uh, last week and um, one of the speakers had just went over it so beautifully, just how the New Testament, you know, we thought was written in the Bible because you open up that Bible right. and you see when you get to um, Matthew, I believe it says right before that, this is the New Testament of blah, 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 blah. And we have to really, really <laughs> understand what the New Testament is. It's not written in pen and ink. See, we have to understand that it's written in our hearts and in our minds, but we have to know what the Old Testament was. See, you got to understand what the Old Testament was to understand what the New Testament is today. I mean, it's, so let's go over there now, Yahshua. Oh boy, let's get, uh, let's get Matthew 1 and 21 where the angel came and told Mary, that she was going to have a son. We have to understand when we're reading the Bible, who's speaking, the time they're speaking, who they're speaking to. Because prior to, 
to learning anything. I didn't know. I didn't know who was speaking. I didn't know who was spoken to. I didn't know none of that. Mm -hmm. So it's important that when we tune into these classes, we pay attention and we take notes because you can't get everything at once. It's impossible. You don't send a kindergartner to kindergarten and ask, ask the child to do algebra. That's not how that works. We, we've taken baby steps here. It doesn't matter how old you are. If you just came to this, this gospel, to this teaching, it doesn't matter. You first have to understand that it's in you. It's in you. Yahshua is in you. Have confidence in that. If you're having a problem reading, speaking, whatever your issue is, Joshua will help you. I don't even know why I just said that, but it's true. He will help you. He is a wonderful father. I always go back to Romans 1, 19 and 20. I'm, I, I don't know any parent that wants to see their children fail. Who wants to see that? We have to understand everybody is not going to be able to be a part of this glorious gospel. It says over there in John that Yahshua said, I pray for you. I don't pray for the world. The world is doomed, people. It's doomed. He said he prays for his children. So any issue that you have, he will help you. He'll help you. So let's get whatever I just asked for. I'm all over the place. Please forgive me. We don't have you know, lectures written. <laughs> we don't know what we're going to be called. We have to have confidence in Yahshua that whatever, whatever he wants you to talk about, that's what you're going to talk about. That's just, that's just how it is. You have to have confidence in Yahshua. See, we don't serve the puny Elohim. We don't serve a puny Elohim like the world does. They serve a puny God. We don't, we don't, we serve a marvelous, eternal Elohim. He's mar he is amazing. You know, so we go into this Bible, this is a research organization. We research these things. The moderator is, the, the moderation is absolutely beautiful. You know, you can take notes just from the moderation. <laughs> Any questions that you have, will be answered. So I just want to talk about the New Testament really quickly, um, the Old and the New Testament. So we understand that when Yahshua came in, now he dealt with Hebrews, with the Jews. He, that's the people he chose. The Jews. They spoke Hebrew. So we have to understand we, we just have to understand what's going on at this time. So Matthew 1 and 21, get that real quick. Matthew 1 and 21. Mm -hmm. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahshua, for he shall save his people from their sins. See, now, that couldn't have said Jesus right there. It couldn't have. First off, there was no letter J in the Hebrew, Greek, or Latin languages. Still today. Still today. So if we was to go back then, back there and say, we're, hey, hey, y'all, we're Jesus. They would look at us like we are crazy. And really, don't ask for Jehovah. They ain't really look at us crazy. They can't even say J. J, j, that is made up. It is a figment of a man's imagination, people. Jesus needs a savior too, if you want to put it like that. So he said, Yahshua. And after, after it says Yahshua, what, it, what is right there after it says Yahshua? It's a colon. It's a colon. 
So anything after that colon, it is, explains what came before it. So it said, Yahshua, for he shall what? Save. That's the only one that could have done it. It's in his name. Shua means salvation. Deliverer. Savior. See, now you have Yahweh, the almighty, or, or um, the all in all, or eternal. You know, you have Elohim, you have Yahshua. And those three are one. See, we learn these things about our creator. See, the things that we say can be proven. Now we say, Yahshua, he's going to save the people from their sins. That's what he came in to do. He also came in and he, he also fulfilled what was written of him in the scriptures. I may not get into the New Testament. I don't know where I'm going. Let's get Luke. Let's get Luke 24. Because we what we've done over the years, we pick and choose what we want to believe. We, we you know, pick and choose what, you know, oh, that fits me better than this, or mm -hmm. this fits me better than, you know. See now the 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 Jew, the Jews, the children of Israel, they had a law. Mm -hmm. Now, prior to Yahshua coming in and giving them this law, now he saved them from Egypt. He said, you know, when you come out of Egypt, you are going to worship me. They said, I we, we will. Whatever you say, you have saved us. We are going to worship you. He gave them a law. So clean up three days. This law will be spoken down. You can read it over in Leviticus. But he said, he said so much, but he said, do not take the name of Yahweh. Your Elohim in vain. See, don't do that. And you know, today, you know, well, they say, you know, well, taking it in vain means to to, uh, to not think of it as being worthy, worthless. So you take it in vain when you're using Jesus and the Lord and God right. and all That's of that. Right. That's right. So you're taking it in vain. You know, the Jews today, they don't say his name because they say it's too holy to say. It's very holy. But he wants his creatures to know who he is. You know, you better call on the name of Yahweh. You know, and everybody is doing it without even knowing it. You, you breathing it. You don't even know it. That's why I'm always so emotional. Because he showed me I'm breathing his name. I'm breathing his name and didn't even know it. Let everything that has breath praise the name of Yahweh. I mean, it's, 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 it's great. It's great, people. So let's get over there, Luke, really quick. I think I'm, mm -hmm. my time is almost up. So let's get Luke, because mm -hmm. this is what Yahshua is, is, is saying. So I want to be obedient and, and start right here. Mm -hmm. Did you want to start at one, Dr. Lewis? No, I want uh, where he tells... Um, um, the disciples beginning at Moses. Um, I think that's Luke, yeah. Luke 24, 25, and then 44. Okay. That's Luke 24, and I'll start at, uh, yep, I'll start at 25. Okay. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe, all that the prophets have spoken, ought not Yahshua to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Now, this is now, continue, please. Mm -hmm. And beginning at, sorry, 27 first, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them and all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Mm -hmm. And you want me to drop down? 44. Mm -hmm. 44 first, and he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that mm -hmm. all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. See, the things that we have learned, all of it is concerning Yahshua. He said, beginning at Moses, we know that Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. 
Now, I had nothing new to say. I think I, every time I speak, this is what I'm talking about. It's nothing. I don't have nothing else to talk, talk about. <laughs> you know, it's nothing else to talk about. You know, I was reading what, what um, real quick. Uh, I think that lecture, I think it's the power within. A beautiful, mm-hmm. you had this, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. He said, right. now this is, you know, this, this is repetitive. You know, Yahweh is repetitive. He, you know, that, that's just what he does. He's like, are you tired? You know, you don't want to come in because we're going to be talking about blood, water, spirit. You know, you getting tired of Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua. And so I think he said that. You getting tired of hearing that. But are you getting tired of your heart from beating? You ain't getting tired of that. See, he's showing us something. You ain't getting tired of that sun from rising every morning without fail. You ain't getting tired of that. That's right. So I don't know, folks. If you don't want me here, if y'all don't want to hear me talk about, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Mm-hmm. See, he's beginning at Moses. Now Moses wrote the first five books. Felicia, we're not gonna have time to get it. I wish we. I wish we did. You have fifteen minutes. You got time. Oh boy, but <sighs> okay, let's read a little bit of this, please. Let's just okay. read a little bit. What you want? Because it's very powerful. And what I what I just say, okay, you know what, y'all? Let's just start. Let's just start and then I'll let you know um where I want you to stop. It's it's absolutely beautiful. See, this, these are the things that has grabbed me, that has caused me to just I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Things like this, it, it causes you to just think. Just, Yashua, help me use my brain. That's, that's what this teaching has caused me to do. It has caused me to really put things into perspective. I'm talking about everything. Everything. Okay, let's read, please. Dr. Craig, can you read, please? Certainly. <laughs> The Power Within You by Dr. Kenley. I have been greatly inspired and in the meantime encouraged by the remarks and the lecture given by Dr. Harris and Dr. Merton. I sat there and gave my utmost attention to every expression that came forth out of their mouths. Mm -hmm. I think if we were able to conscientiously and constructively absorb every word that they say, I'm sure that we wouldn't have to be here tonight. As Dr. Harris said and talked about the physical functions of the body and that power within you that causes it to function or to operate, such as the voluntary and involuntary functions of the physical body. That is the power that all the doctors in the world have yet something to learn about. Mm -hmm. I compare it to the great God of this universe that we have plenty to learn about, that functions and operations go on continuously within us as a physical operation to us. Pause. That sentence right there. See, I didn't tell my heart to beat this morning. I would have, I would have been dead. I can't remember to say, okay, breathe. Okay, blink your eyes. Okay, walk. Okay, talk. Okay, do this. Okay. That is the power that Yahweh has. He has, he he is causing everything to be. That power that is within you. Mm. Continue, please. There is something far greater than that that causes it to operate. Mm-hmm. The spiritual force, which Dr. Merton went into the great into the depths of to show you that that power within you to do the things that are constructive and necessary to survive and to exist, to be more comfortably situated in life and to keep life itself from being a burden to you by using that power, that mm-hmm. force within you constructively and instill it within us to be conscious of its presence and to use it at all times to the best advantage Mm -hmm. when he put together the functions and operations of the physical body of psychic forces and begin to look into them in a constructive way it will give us something to think about still there dr correa Yes, next page, please. Okay, yeah, for the, so. sorry. <laughs> for the rest of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for him to say it. He was waiting okay. for me to flip the page. <laughs> okay, sorry, Dr. Craig. For, for example, uh-huh. you don't have to say, I see, they just see. Right, they just it? see. 
Right. What causes it? Okay, continue. You don't have to say I see or go to some mechanic or restaurant to take in certain elements, resources to keep it going. They just see. That's all. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to be hooked to any mechanical thing outside you. It just operates. Right. Mm -hmm. There arises a question of just what is life? That, then when we look into it, try to analyze it, and to understand it from a physical and spiritual analysis, we say that God is life. So therefore, life is something that you never learn too much about. Mm. Dr. Harris spoke of the blood circulatory system. It is continuously operating and functioning. Moses says that the life of the flesh is in the blood, which is comparatively speaking that physical life is the blood divine life or spiritual life that is connected with your psychic forces. So to put the two together to balance the great overslope or the life itself, which I might say is the great God of this universe manifesting in every cosmic phase of nature. In every cosmic phase of nature, he is included in. He is it. That's amazing to me. That's why he's so great and so powerful. Oh, man. Continue, please. Now we have our physical body with mm -hmm. every animate and inanimate, with organic and inorganic particles of matter. It gives you something to think about, and I'm sure you won't be able, you won't be able to solve the great mystery of life and the functions and operations of a physical body within such a degree or such a limit of time that you can work it out within an hour or a day or so and shove it to one side as a solved mystery. Nobody at this present time has been able to understand the multiplicity and the ramifications of nature in its simplicity and in its reality, and neither have they been able to analyze God to such an extent until it's a passive thing, and everybody knows what it's all about, and we don't have to know or concern ourselves with it. I look at the examples that God has given us. And as I listened to both Dr. Harris and Dr. Merton, it brought to my mind some things that I've been trying my best to use these charts and dignity to represent. For example, the tabernacle back in the wilderness of Sinai was symbolical to the tabernacle of your body. And in that tabernacle, we have the blood, water, and the spirit. The blood, the water, and the holy anointing oil symbolizing the spirit. Before you could enter into the holy place or into the first part of that tabernacle, everything that has to do with this brazen altar, before you even approach the brazen labor, something had to die, had to give its life. That is a beast to atone for a man's sin. Right. So when Yahweh, I'm sorry, Brandon, I'm going to interrupt okay. you a little bit. So Yahweh, he took the children of Israel out. He said, you're going to worship me. He gave them a law. Now, prior to this, it, they had no law. They, they did whatever. So he gave them this law and I don't even know if I, okay. They had to sacrifice or they had to sacrifice an animal or whatever for whatever, whatever sin that they committed. They had to offer up a, a sacrifice to atone for their sin. So they did something bad. You know, Yahweh, Yahweh gave them that law. They did something bad. They, if they did it, they had to offer up a sacrifice to atone for their sins. You know, that was an example. This is, this is truly amazing. See, our ultimate sacrifice was Joshua the Messiah. He offered up himself to atone for the man's sins. He saved us by that blood that he shed. So now we have this in the earth plane. It shows us the process that he took in order to do this. It's, it's, it, it's amazing to me. Continue, please. Then the priest had to wash his flesh, then be mm -hmm. anointed with the holy anointing oil compounded after the art of the apothecary. Mm -hmm. The oil represented the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Those See, now we wouldn't have known that being out there in the world. That's right. Right. I know y'all get tired of me crying. Oh, this is amazing, people. We want to know that. But he chose us to hear this and to believe it and to preach. Continue. Those were preliminary preparations that had to be made first before he was justified in entering the door to the tabernacle or enter inside the tabernacle. Now, the tabernacle had a most holy place, 
Now, most holy place, holy place in a court roundabout. Mm -hmm. And it and it's compared to the man's body, which is the tabernacle. We have a head cavity, a chest cavity, and the dominal region. See, that is the Godhead or the supernal nature of Yahweh. Yahweh is pure spirit. Elohim is the word or son. Yahshua is the savior. So you can compare that to the most holy place, holy place court roundabout. In the three compartments of that tabernacle, that's one tabernacle, just like the man's body, just like the supernal nature of Yahweh. It's only one Yahweh. He has two manifestations. Continue, please. I know I'm almost out of time. Continue. After he went through those ceremonies and necessary operations to prepare him to walk into the door of the tabernacle, after he entered inside, there were other physical objects there, such as the golden mm -hmm. candlestick, the table of shoe bread, and the golden altar of incense. Those were the only three vessels inside of that sanctuary. He had to go in there each and every day to carry out the service of the law. Just as he had to do that every day of the year, your physical body functions, blood system, and your mind, etc., functions too. Every day in this physical tabernacle of your body. See, it, it's an example. He's showing us that that tabernacle that he told them to build out there is the same thing as the tabernacle of our physical body. The operations that took place is the same operations that's going on in our bodies. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> Continue, please. Those figures represented, for example, the golden candlestick. It wasn't just set there, nor were any parts of the tabernacle just set there because the children of Israel couldn't find something else to do, and they had to occupy their time. The tabernacle right. was built with a purpose behind it. So mm -hmm. then the golden candlestick on the inside of the tabernacle that burned through the night represents a spiritual force within you. Mm -hmm. It was a light that burned through the night. Of course, the daytime took care of itself, so your understanding be illuminated or gives you light or understanding of the overall picture of the great light of all lights, which is God. Isn't that amazing? So now we understand over there in Isaiah, you know, they don't have no light in them. That means they don't have no understanding. Their understanding is darkened. Yahshua said, I am the light of the world. Mm -hmm. That showbread that was in there. You know, he rained down manna. He said, I am the, I'm the bread. I'm the truth. You eat this, the, the water at the well. He said, if you drink of this water, you'll never thirst. Mm -hmm. See, we, we <sighs> continue. The seven branches on the candlestick meant that through the seven days of creation or seven ages or dispensations of time, that burning light or God being the light or Christ being the light of the world. We mm -hmm. always have that to rely upon. See, that we always have that to rely on. We always get that to rely on. Continue. That candlestick burning within the tabernacle lets you know that Christ in you is the illumination of your understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom of God. See, that... <sighs> See, it's the Messiah. It's Yahshua in us he is that power within us that's causing the things to operate he's gonna talk about that high priest that's operating in that tabernacle that physical tabernacle out there yahshua is the true high priest he's causing all of these things to function properly in our physical bodies continue the bread on the table showed that he was the bread of life Right, Not just in its physical sense as it appeared there, but it was to let you know that in order to continue to grow in knowledge and wisdom and understanding, it was necessary for you to eat the spiritual food, just like the high priest went in every day and ate that physical food. Ain't that perfect? That, now that's yes. perfect. That, mm -hmm. that, that's perfect. Continue. Mm -hmm. Now we go to the golden altar of incense, where the incense was burned at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and 9 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. The Israelites, three tribes on each side of the tabernacle, which, cons which constituted the 12 tribes, these tribes were not permitted to go in and out of the tabernacle. It was the functions and operations of the high priest, which symbolized the functions and operations of the Holy Spirit in your heart and mind. Mm -hmm. So at three o'clock in the afternoon, since their Holy Spirit was not at that time universally poured out upon them in a collective sense, 
then this mm -hmm. answers for the absence of the Holy Spirit within them or from the fall of Adam. Mm -hmm. See, now from, from the mm -hmm. fall of Adam, he brought mm -hmm. in that transgression. Mm -hmm. You know, he, and but Yahshua, what he, he, um, Adam was the degenerator. Yahshua was the regenerator. See, now from all, from, from all, from Adam, all die. I forgot where that is. I'm running out of time and my baby just woke up. Yeah, <laughs> so from Adam, <laughs> okay, all men have died, but Yahshua, what he did, he came in, saved the man from his sins. That on that cross, he shed his blood. That brought man and Yahshua back together, if you will. Mm -hmm. He shed that blood, he saved us. So from that transgression of Adam, see that in a sense separated us from the Messiah. When Yahshua came in, that brought us back together. You had a Holy Spirit. You can understand something. See, now the previous speaker talked about you say stuff to these people, they don't understand. We didn't neither. But what Yahshua did, he called us in. He put that spirit within us. That causes us to understand the things that he says. He's, you know, remember, he spoke in parables. Remember, he spoke in parables. They received the Holy Spirit. Oh, now I get it. <laughs> now I understand that. Continue, Brandon, right. please. Have a few minutes. That means that Christ was the intercessor for them, just as the high priest was the intercessor for the children of Israel. Right. I have noticed a lot of confusion exists in the so-called Christian world about Christ, the Messiah, which we have discussed recently. To me, Christ is not the physical man walking around on the face of the earth. If so, he could not be within anyone. And as I often hear the gross error explaining the church is within you or each one must have a church within you. The church is not within anyone. You are in the church. Mm -hmm. If the church was in you, then there would be a number of churches. But since there is but one church, then all of us must be in that one church with that one quickening spirit in us. Now, we know that the church, that's the assembly. That's, that's right. the children. That's the brethren that Yahshua chose. See, we are in him. Continue. If I have some more minutes, this is this free, Brandon. <laughs> to understand that, it somewhat gives us an elevated concept of what really is within us or what mm -hmm. should be within us. To me, Christ is a quickening spirit, not a physical man that will come down through the sky and bring a lot of angels. I think of him having walked around here on the face of the earth as Yahshua, the Savior. Mm -hmm. And now that physical body has been taken off. And for him to be in you at this particular time, I would say that it was the spirit of Elohim or the Messiah in you, which means one and the same thing. For that reason, I say that before it can become effective, it must become a counterpart to shape and to form our lives. We must have that power within us. I'm going to stop right there. I hope you all can continue reading that, but we must have that power within us. Right. We have to have that confidence in Yahshua the Messiah. If we, if we don't have the confidence, ask him for it. Right. Yes. He gives us everything that we need. He gives that to us. He's the perfect parent. He gives us everything. We, we need an understanding. He has given us that and he will continue to do so. See, now it's in him. It's in, it's, he's in us. See, now it's another transcript that said, now you have to die to go to heaven. We, we have to understand these things. We have to understand what he's talking about. See, now that power must be within you. And that's Yahshua the Messiah. So I hope I was not all over the place. I hope something was said. Um, all praises to Yahshua. If you have time, please read this. I've read mm -hmm. it so many times, but mm -hmm. continue to go over these things. Read mm -hmm. this. And it brings comfort. We got to know that's Yahshua because he's in us. It brings an understanding. Continue to meet on Zoom. Listen to these calls because we need this. We need it always. So mm -hmm. understand that power that's within you is Yahshua. Nothing else. Um, hallelujah. Thank you for the opportunity. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. And for our next speaker from the Southfield, Michigan class, we'd like to call on Dr. Sharon Lewis. I would like to say good evening to everyone. Good evening. Um, it's always a pleasure to have something to say. 
uh, regarding our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. I actually enjoy class this evening, um, listening to everyone and the testimonies that came forth were very edifying. Um, Yahweh has done so much for us and to hear the um, how appreciative everyone is and how um, he has formed our lives and has uh, manifested himself in us daily and causing each of us to be ever conscious of his ever presence is a wonderful thing. Uh, so we are grateful for those things. Mm -hmm. um, I too enjoyed the transcript. I read that. It's been a while since I had read that particular one. And um, it is a lot of, um, you know, gaining confidence in Yahshua the Messiah and knowing that he is the one that is um, causing us to be and causing everything in this world to happen. You know, um, this teaching is magnificent. And the very fact that we were literally called into it, plucked out of the world by our creator, and we had nothing to do with it. Um, we were in the world and we thought that that was okay. We learned what our parents told us about God, um, the belief you know, the Holy Spirit, we called him by a name or title that we were told. Many of us didn't do any research whatsoever. And it was just the way that if we, if we lend, you know, let our minds go back and try to reflect and remember how we came into the teaching, that it was literally nothing that we did on our own. We didn't even know that we were searching, many of us. We didn't know what we were looking for. We were um, okay for the most part, you know, uh, in, in the belief. But when we heard this divine teaching, it was something that was, that was captivating. It captured us against our will and it, it made us be still, you know, to hear this. We, um, we, we were caught, you know, I'm trying to use the words and reflecting on how I remember feeling, uh, just caught. It wasn't like I felt like I would go anywhere or that, oh, you know, I got to get out of this. Yahweh just made me be still and reflect on those things that were so powerful because they were just so um, common sense, if you will. They were so literal. It was just a beautiful thing. Um, I grew up in the church and, you know, uh, believed in Lord God and Jesus Christ. I believe Dr. Bivens was talking about, you know, having that conversation uh, with her sister. I think she said that, says so she spoke in tongue. You know, we never even understood what that was about, you know, and didn't have the, the fullness of it until coming into this teaching, you know, the true speaking in tongue. Um, let me have over there for it. When she said that, it made me think of Isaiah, the 28th chapter, I think it is, whom shall we teach knowledge? If you can get that forming, because we didn't know that we didn't know. And I like to start off like we always, you know, typically do. In the year 1931, the founder, Dr. Henry Cooper Kenley, had a divine vision and revelation from the creator himself. And that man preached this gospel, the gospel that you hear in many of these schools now, uh, that he has preached that um, for many years before he took off the flesh. And from 1931 to 1976, when he took off the flesh, I believe it was 76. And this teaching has been standing. We understand now it's been 90 years. You know, it doesn't even seem like it has been that long. I mean, I wasn't born in 1931, but, you know, to say that it's almost 100 years, Yahweh's been teaching his gospel. 
you know, giving us insight and understanding about him. And it never changed. I mean, the reality of it, the truth of it never changed. It's the same thing that was told to Moses on the Alabama. Uh, on Mount Moriah, Mount Sinai, on John, um, in the Aegean Sea. You see Dr. Kenley, you know, Dr. Kenley had the transcript, you know, we recently read, it said he, that I recently read, that he didn't come in, he didn't come in saying something different than what Moses said or what John said, what the prophets throughout the ages said. He came in saying the self same thing. He said, and if I came in saying anything different, then I, it wasn't from Yahweh. Don't believe me. You see, paraphrasing. He came in saying the self same thing, giving us evidence and proof that we really, you know, couldn't could not fight against whatsoever. You see, so he chose us. He he picked us. He, he told us something about himself. And the thing that he's resonating through my mind, it seems like in conversation, when I watch the news on TV, when I interact with people who don't know, you know, is that this is a revealed thing. The understanding about our creator, Yahweh, and his son, Yahshua, the Messiah, is a revealed thing. Yes, it is. His purpose and his pattern, his plan. The purpose for the creation is a revealed thing. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have guessed upon it if we tried our darndest. We couldn't have come up with this. Mm -hmm. And so he, he, you know, it's by revelation. And that's why now at this last day, we, you know, we are, <laughs> everyone said it tonight. We're just so grateful. We're so thankful. It's almost without, you know, you'd be lost for words. Just thank you, Yashua. You know, I, I thank you, you know, for letting me know this. Yahweh had to reveal that. So when Dr. Kennedy had this vision and he gave it, you know, freely, yeah, he asked the question, man, what will you do with what I've given you? I was told that Yahweh asked him that. Then he says, teach your people your will. Oh, Yahweh. You know, set up these schools throughout the United States and world. You know, over the years, over time, you know, we have been, you know, preaching this gospel, preaching this gospel. I remember when I came in, they said, we're preaching the creation out. Mm -hmm. That's what we were told. Mm -hmm. We're preaching this creation out. And Yahweh's vision and his voice, his word went out and won't return void. And what we've seen over the years is that everything that has been proclaimed, everything that the founder of this school, Dr. Henry Cooper Kenley stated, what happened has happened. We've seen evidence upon evidence in every facet, politically, religiously, you know, the, this, uh, the, 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 the right down to the to the weather, you know, told us it would change. The planets would line up. He says it would change. You know, it was almost ninety yesterday, and it's freezing now. I had to close every window of my house. You start out in the daytime, and you're twenty degrees, thirty degrees. He says it will change. We were told that. He says, when those planets line up in conjunction, I believe that was back in 74, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong about that. But, um, you know, there's been things that have been told. So we sit here as, um, you know, you know, believers, if you would, you know, believing in the things that Yahweh has showed us throughout the ages and the dispensations, the times that he has given this vision, you know, and had told mankind something about himself. But go ahead and mm -hmm. get that scripture for me. If mm -hmm. you That's Isaiah 28 and 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Now you see that. Mm -hmm. Now whom will he, uh, I'm sorry, give it, you have to excuse That's okay. Me. Whom <laughs> shall he tired. teach knowledge? 
Mm-hmm. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Mm-hmm. You know, we come to understand that wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability mm-hmm. of thy times and strength of salvation, as it mm-hmm. says in Isaiah, the 33rd chapter, I think. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a time that we need to be stable in our heart and our mind, you know, stable in the belief that you have a creator that has done all things and is our savior, not oscillating. Do you know people, there are people who are oscillating, don't know if they have a savior. And there are people right in this institute that don't know that. It's awesome. We have to know that. We must know that. So we have, and that knowledge gives us some stability and strength of salvation in the times that Yahweh has purposed and foreordained. We are in a time. We are in the end times. It's the time where we will see a lot of manifestations of what he's been preaching, you see. And if you noticed, A lot of those phrases that Dr. Kenley has said, I think it was one transcript that we just recently read as quoted also in Matthew's, the 24th chapter, that there, these end times will be times such as never was before. No, nor ever shall be, is what I believe Matthew said. And Dr. Kenley quoted that in the recent transcript that we had read on Tuesday night. You know, just times that you've never have seen before. Now, you know, we can all testify to that. We see things going on in this world now we never would have thought, you know, was true. Couldn't, can't believe it. You see, so we are in this particular time, times of revelations, times of everything is being revealed. Can't hide anything. You know, used to say big brother watching. Yahweh sees it all and everything is being exposed. Every finite thing, everything that you think is going on in the dark, everything that you think or we think we are hiding, every thought. Now, you know, if if we're seeing it, you know Yahweh is seeing our thoughts, Mm -hmm. our actions. You know, we try to hide what we really feel. I'm going to tell you something. You really can't hide it from the spirit of Yahweh, you see, from a lot of things. That's why we may as well come clean. And I remember Dr. Kennedy said that. May as well come clean. Be open. You know, be honest about it. You know, but Yahweh's carrying us. He is. But continue on. Mm -hmm. Uh I'll start at the ninth verse. Whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make? to understand doctrine. Now we were made to understand this doctrine, is my point. Made to understand it. We didn't have a choice in it. When he called our name, so you're gonna understand this. And those of us that saw something, when we started asking, Yahshua, show me more. Yahshua, reveal this to me. Yahshua, make me understand. And anything that you ask in the name of Yahshua, According to his purpose, he will grant it to you. You get an understanding. You sincerely want it. Yahweh will give you an understanding. I'm not talking about being able to rattle off the mysteries and esoterics and, you know, run everything, every chart. And I'm not saying that, although that is the case as well, too. But he'll make you understand his purpose, make you understand his nature. That's what he'll make you understand. But whom shall he teach knowledge and make to understand doctrine? Go ahead and read. Mm-hmm. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Now weaned from the milk and drawn mm-hmm. from the breast. Such mm-hmm. a simple analogy, but I had never heard it before. You know, you take a baby, for instance, you're going to wean the baby from the milk and drawn from the breast. That's like you're getting the baby acclimated coming off of the milk, if you would. But the primary point is the child is on the milk. You see, he's having milk. Weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. And you see that with a baby and a mother and she takes that baby to one breast 
nursing that baby, giving the baby nourishment, giving the baby food, sustenance, sustenance, you see, feeding the child, like our parent Yahweh feeds us, you know, and we understand that the milk, we, we it's an analogy of that to the law and to the testimony, the simple things, those two breasts, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, Yahweh supplied that child with and that mother with for to nurture and feed that child already prepared, you know, like placing the Adam and Eve in the garden. The garden was in fruition. It was already prepared. You know, that milk is already there. It's for the child. And every, every animal has that, that, you know, have that newborn and the mother can supply that uh, nourishment for that child that's already in bed. It was there before the child was there, if you know what I'm saying. You know, it's already prepared. I'm telling you, Yahweh is so beautiful. So it's the, he's giving you knowledge and understanding by following the basic principles, like that milk is, is uh, pure and it's, it's not harsh. It's something that can be um, uh, digested, if you would, for that mm -hmm. newborn baby. We can't give mm -hmm. them meat. You know, you can't feed them. You don't have teeth to chew, you know? So the sustenance, uh, I watch my new grandbaby and just be just as satisfied and just as plump and healthy from milk. You know, each one of my kids, just milk. How does that happen? But that's a type. You know, when we talk about this milk that we're getting now, the unadulterated pureness of this gospel, you see, and he and the prescribed way to go about them, about getting that understanding, them that are weaned from the milk and drawn for the breast. Go ahead and read. That is 10th verse, for precept must be upon precept. Now, she pulled up this particular chart, mm -hmm. you know, says for precept, precept mm -hmm. is a principle. Mm -hmm. must be upon precept, read. Mm -hmm. Precept upon precept, line upon line, mm -hmm. line upon line. Now let's look at this chart. Mm -hmm. So the precept, the principle mm -hmm. of blood, water, spirit, mm -hmm. death, burial, resurrection, mm -hmm. to the law, mm -hmm. to the testimony. Mm -hmm. These are precepts. This is the way that Yahweh has set aside to feed his children, That's to right. come into a knowledge so that we can grow up with strong bones and healthy bodies That's right. in him. Grow up with a sound mind. See, and what this does, the principles that Yahweh or the food that Yahweh has set aside, it allows us to develop properly. You see, like that milk allows that baby to develop properly. And, and also it was told, you know, medically proven that when that baby first starts nursing that newborn, uh, it's not the actual milk the first couple of two or three days, but it's the, I believe it's called right. cholesterol. Yeah, cholesterol. That, that baby mm -hmm. right. sucking, sucking on that mother's breast, bring in the actual milk, but the essential nutrients that will carry that child through the first years of their life is nursing from that mother's breast. It's just amazing you know, antibodies in it, you know, nutrients, vitamins, you know, it, it's amazing what Yahweh has prepared for us, you see, from that newborn baby, if you will. Uh, go ahead and read. A precept must be upon precept. Sorry, I was talking on mute. For, sta for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Now this is to speaking to the first speaker, Dr. Bevins. You know, for with stever stammering lips mm -hmm. and another tongue. Mm -hmm. And they say over there, you know, I'm speaking in tongue. And nobody knows what they're saying. They don't even know what they're saying. Mm -hmm. You know, Yahweh is not an the author of confusion. confusion. I think that's, that's right. over in Corinthians. He's not, he's not gonna say words that nobody can understand. 
And then when he spoke in parables, he would give the explanation of that parable to his son or to the chosen one, you see. But now, you know, you say, I'm speaking in tongue. Nobody doesn't, nobody knows what you're saying, you know. That the true speaking of tongue is what I just said, what we talk about, you know, what this teaching has proven to us with stammering lips in another tongue, precept, line upon line. I see the I see the five minute bill, line upon line, you know, there's a blood line, there's a water line, there's a spirit line, line upon line line upon line. Go ahead and read. Get myself off mute, sorry. Wherefore, I'm sorry. I think I lost my place, I'm sorry. 12th verse. 12th verse, Henry. okay. Thank you, Dr. Craig. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. Go back another verse, please. Okay. For with stammering lips, For with and, stammering a, lips mm -hmm, and another and, tongue, mm -hmm, will he speak to this people? Will he speak to his people. I'm That's telling right. you what that is. Mm -hmm. Blood, water, spirit, death, burial, resurrection, mm -hmm. 40 principle, to the law, to the testimony. Mm -hmm. We go on and on. These are the things that the, this is what was given to us. Mm -hmm. With stammering lips, and you tell it to someone, they don't understand it. What are you talking about? What do you hear? They can't understand. But we understand what Yahweh is saying, and we understand what he is telling us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Will he speak to his people is what it says. That's Go right. ahead and read. To whom he said, this is the rest. Where now, this is the rest. Yes, That's what we want. This is mm -hmm. the rest. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. And you believe this? Yes. This is the rest. This is the refreshing. But yet everybody want to go off somewhere in stratosphere, or, you know, worship a man and look at, you know, conspiracy theories. And Yahweh just made it so simple you know, just told us and shared with us how to come into a profound knowledge of him. And it will give us rest, yes, maintaining the integrity of this teaching as we have heard it from the beginning will give you rest mm -hmm. in today's time. Mm -hmm. it's, I'm sorry, it just will. Some mm -hmm. people want to think it's more to it than that, but that's what it is. Believe what Yahweh has said. Search into the things that he has told us. Don't change a thing. Right. Just look at it for what it is. Dr. Kenley says many times he did not mince words. In other words, he just didn't talk randomly, you know, just to be hearing himself talk. What he said, there was a point behind it. It met, he met what he said. Listen to those things. We've got an abundance, a wealth of information. Ask Yahweh in your heart and mind to show us something for sure about him. Make us sure-footed. Those of us who may be straddling or new in this gospel, hearing these things, you're not sure you ask your father to show and to reveal it to him, to you. And he will do that. It's a beautiful thing, people, what Yahweh has done. Count ourselves fortunate. Yes and blessed that he has called us into this fold of everlasting life. I thank you for the time uh, given, and um, may Yahweh be with us all. Hallelujah. 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 This brings an end to this evening's class. We do have one announcement. Dr. Brandon Craig will review the green chart and the 12 cranial nerves in the brain on next Thursday, June 3rd. We would like to thank all of our speakers, visiting brethren, and all the other participants for joining us this evening. We hope that everyone was edified and asked that you come back and study with us. We hold classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. and on Sundays from 1.30 to 3.30. We would like to ask everyone to remain muted until the host has indicated the recording has stopped. We will now have doxology taken from the last two verses in the book of Jude.
Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say, hallelujah. Hallelujah.